Rokan 23. That's right. It is here. It's not back. It's here. It's the first one. Join the ultimate celebration of digital content with its creators, passionate fans, and industry experts. It is all happening in downtown Waco across multiple venues, January 20th through the 22nd of 2023. Now, if you want to go, you got to get tickets, and tickets are on sale at roguecon23.com. That's roguecon, R-O-G-U-E-C-O-N 23.com. Be there. I'm going to be there. Everybody's going to be there. Let's go. Hey, y'all. I'm April. And I'm Caroline. And this is your bloody happy hour. Caroline, are you ready for this? This is your newest guilty pleasure. It's the bloodiest part of your week. Did we say something about it also being happy hour? Showed in. Because we're about to be sipping on some murder. Bloody happy hour. Hey, y'all. This is April. Hey, this is Marshall Applewhite. <laughs> This is your bloody happy hour. We hope that you are thirsty. Oh, man. We I'm thirsty. We hope that you're ready for another cult because you're getting one. It's good stuff coming at you right now. And Get we're ready. promising not to do a cult that you, that when you think of cults, the two maybe main that come to your mind. Which come to your mind? Them. Which come to your mind? Jim Jones, David Koresh. Koresh. Yeah. So the one that I did last week, never heard of Marshall Applewhite and the Heaven's Gate cult. The one you're doing today, never heard of her or seen her. And I never want to see her again. She's a little crazy. <laughs> she has great hair. <clears throat> and we have two more coming at you, but we don't know what they're, what they're going to be yet. But before we get started, I have to tell you guys about um, Taylor Young. And what was crazy is I was going to tell you about him in last week's episode with the cult. And I had to edit it out because he went from a missing person to now it's a murder investigation or homicide investigation. So let me tell you about him because the story is happening quickly. Taylor Young is a 25-year-old black male I said male because you may think female when you hear Taylor. True. It's a very gender neutral name. He lived in Houston. He graduated from Sam Houston State University a couple years ago. He had a career as an accountant at some um, like well-known place in Houston. He was a very regimented person. It was just him and his dog. He had a girlfriend. Um, from what I couldn't see, I could see, I don't think that they were living together at, at the time, but they've lived together at one point and they were moving, they're about to move in together. Um, he's the only child of his mama, <laughs> Miss Robinson, I think was her last name. Mm -hmm. And they talk every day. So mom knew something was wrong when she called her kid and messaged him, and she didn't hear anything back. And she, first, she's like, oh, he's 25 years old. But then after it went on for a while, she got really worried. So she called, and she called, and she called. And then, all of a sudden, Taylor's girlfriend knocked at the door of his mom's house and was like, have you seen Taylor? And so then she was really panicking because if he hasn't talked to mama and he hasn't talked to girlfriend, then something must be wrong. So they decide to go on Find My iPhone, and they found his phone downtown Houston at a bank. And I don't think he banked at this bank, but it was in the bushes near the ATM there, okay? When they looked at video, his car was seen in the video, and they couldn't understand why he would be there when he was there. He was very regimented, meaning he got up every morning and walked his dog, Gigi. Then he'd go to work. And then at lunchtime, he would come home, walk his dog, Gigi. Him and Gigi would take a nap together. And then he would go back to work every day. That was his routine. And so the fact that he was at this bank, not really close to his job, 
mom was kind of questioning. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then, so this happened on December 9th, 2021. So right before Christmas, they had all these Christmas plans and he'd went gone missing. And so she created this hashtag, bring Taylor home. And Houston PD was investigating it, but it hadn't gone worldwide, really. Um, And so she kind of had trouble getting people to kind of acknowledge this. I know that Cardi B tweeted about it and tried to get the story out there, but it's not missing white woman syndrome. So he did. She (laughs) didn't get really. He wasn't everywhere like Gabby Petito was. So. <clears throat> on January 19th, she got the worst news she could have gotten. His car was found, and this whole time he was missing, so was his car. His car was found at an impound lot in Dallas, Texas. So Houston, Dallas, that is what, minimum five-hour drive, four-and-a-half, five-hour drive uh, away from where he was last, his car was last seen. He drove a 2019 silver Honda Civic and had been in the impound. And in the trunk of the car was Taylor Young's body at an advanced stage of decomposition. So he had been mummified. Mummified. Caroline had to figure that out because she was picturing <laughs> toilet paper and. <laughs> <laughs> we actually had to do a little research before so we weren't asking a bunch of questions i had so many <laughs> so then of course mom is devastated and what is weird is she put the message out on various platforms including some of the pages that were open before the news even put it out like yeah way earlier yeah. before the news even put it out what was that <laughs> trying to click a link to talk about this guy but it started playing oh so um yeah like she notified or because i said something to you and you were like what and i said well apparently he's been found dead and it wasn't even on the news yeah like there was no press release or anything about it no so i don't know why she jumped the gun or whatever why she maybe wanted to get it out before i guess the I news outlet worked we still don't know like the cause of death or the manner of death yet, unless it's come in since the last time I've looked at it. Um, coworkers did say he was running errands on his lunch break, so which is out of his normal routine, um, but not unheard of. So he was running errands. So the question is, his phone was found in the bushes, placed in the bushes by the ATM. Who placed it there? Did he drop it? Um, who did he see or who ran into him or who did he meet up with in the time that he was running errands? So on December 9th, when he went missing, like, it, uh, you know, some people who are his friends or like, there's gotta be something he, I mean, not that he was the, I don't like what happened. Like there's something that you were into or like that somebody, something with your girlfriend, something with. So what I thought was weird is because he seemed, as far as we can tell, like a like a good kid. Yeah, good normal kid. Um, and either this wouldn't even this wouldn't excuse the behavior, but a lot of times something else comes out by now, like right. oh maybe he was into drugs or you know something which would not excuse his death or this behavior, but people like to hear that part and it kind of makes them think that maybe the death, the death is less important. Nothing like that has come, come out. All we hear is he's a great loving kid who works hard and had goals, like was dedicated. What I thought was weird is that the girlfriend's name was Amber. Her mom started calling up these true crime YouTube podcast that she listened to. And she, it like had herself interviewed, basically volunteered to be interviewed about the murder. Um, And there wasn't very much emotion. And Mm. if you, you know, there's a lot of couch, is it called armchair, Mm -hmm. armchair detectives out there. And as of right now, the girlfriend seems a little suspicious, but the girlfriend is always, 
usually the first, you know, the spouse, the husband, yeah, the wife, yeah. the girlfriend, the boyfriend is usually the first suspect. That is Well, the it. new the new hashtag is justice for Taylor. Justice for Taylor. So what I'm going to do is well, I'm going to So sh- his body was found on the January 19th. Yeah. So that So that. Uh-huh. So that was more than 30. It was it was if he went missing on the 9th and was found on the 19th. Imagine like the family had to get through all the holidays. Oh yeah. Not knowing where he but then, was. Like, his what, it, what this car was impounded? Like were That's they what, not like on the lookout for the I mean, I don't know. I mean, I <sighs> If he was reported missing, his car had to be reported missing. Do you know there's like a a database, a Texas b- database and this, all see, you need Texas is too big. It's just too big. But all you do is type in the... um, If we had like 18 states up there, like in the north, you know, they have like 18 (laughs) states that should be just one state. Maybe they would be able to do a better job. But this is what I think. You know this car is missing. And if it's been abandoned somewhere, somebody's going to impound it. So you can type in the license plate every day. It's a Texas-wide license plate. And it'll let you know... Anybody can do it. We can go on and do it. I did it for a friend whose sister was missing, so I looked for her car. So if you put in this license plate, it'll tell you if the car has been impounded. And then it'll tell you where. And so all you do is call. Well, why couldn't the mom do that? I don't know why anybody didn't do it. Or maybe they did, and maybe that's how they found it on the 19th. Oh. So I guess my question would be, was it impounded? We need an expert. On the 19th. I don't know. There's a lot of questions. Um, anyways, I could go on and on and on. I need you guys to be thirsty for more information, too. So on our page, I'm going to post this link and I'm going to put his hashtag justice for Taylor because he's now it used to be bring Taylor home. Well, now he's getting his autopsy and he's going to be able to come home and his family's going to be able to bury him. But where's the justice? We need to figure yeah, out what's happening. Yeah, and we don't know about the cause of death or manner. Like, do we know any of that? No, we don't know any of that yet. Because he was mummified. Yes, and so it's going to take a little bit for them to even figure that out. <laughs> and they can, because so was Gabby and so was... Oh, she was mummified? So was... um. I just read... Ryan. Oh, he Advanced was probably... Stage of- he was just, no. He wasn't mummified. He was just a skull. Skeletal. He was just a skull. Yeah. So if you can find it out from a skull, you can find it out from a, True. a decomposed body. So there y'all go, y'all. Justice for Taylor T A Y L O U R. Caroline, should you tell April me about what? First of all, did you know that? How did tell me how the poll went? <laughs> So remember, we put up the poll and we asked you guys, who do y'all think is most likely to join the Heaven's Gate cult? And of course, Caroline is the I mean, That's How do you? People listen. were even like, no face. Let's face it. Nobody's going to say April's name. <laughs> what? And Robin, Robin was like, Sweet Pea will never let April get next to go near another cult. <laughs> well, it looks like I've there's no hope for me. I've I guess I'm a Heaven's Gate cult. But you know what? The good news is at least I got to interact with Marshall Applewhite because we're basically best friends now. On yes. Facebook. Yeah. In case y'all didn't notice. We have a new follower. We have a new follower. And he has been commenting on some of our posts. And what was crazy is I got the notification (laughs) and it said, Marshall Applewhite commented on (laughs) your post. And I looked at the profile picture and it is Marshall Applewhite (laughs) and those crazy eyes. So I sent it to Caroline. And of course, Caroline has to respond. I literally died. I think I peed a little and I was freaking out and I felt a little famous at that moment. <laughs> From a dead cult leader. I don't know. I was like, is he like really alive and in the UFO? And he's like just <laughs> monitoring with his name via hashtags. I don't know. Anything could be possible. This is how you know Caroline would join the cult because she's second guessing that he's in the 
UFO right now. Listen, <laughs> he and his little friend, whoever that other guy was, David Njoku or whatever, that's a football player, but whatever. He was back there commenting with him and he was like, they were even saying, he was, like, he's going to send us tennis shoes. Yeah. As of right now, they have our shoe sizes. I said to leave him at the courthouse or at a Whataburger. I mean, either place, I'll go pick him up. <laughs> And he's going to get us our very own pair of Nike Decades, according to him. I was trying to keep the conversation going. Told us to. I was shocked you did not respond. He told us to make sure we had our five dollars and seventy five cents <laughs> on it. <laughs> it was kind of hilarious. Oh, that was the best part of the day. So I can't wait till we post this <clears throat> new cult, and maybe we'll have another cult leader yeah. following us. So who's going to be in this poll? I mean, who's going to be what? What do you? What am I saying? I don't know. We're gonna put, make another poll. Right? Oh yes, 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 yes. No, I was saying I can't wait to put out this cult. Yeah. In the event we may get a new cult leader following us, so then we'll have two. I know, and I'm excited to see which one of us oh, is going to be cult. the one to join the cult. Yes. Okay. Because <sighs> I know nothing about this cult, so I'm eager to know. Okay. April, have you ever like been on a diet? Yes. Tell I me, tell that. me a little bit about like what kind of diets you've tried. Well, I remember being younger and thinking, oh, a diet is a way to go, right? But yeah. it actually is just very temporary. Like, results. did you like what? Some of them are like you have to have like. What was the Atkins diet? Atkins diet. That, I remember so it's like, I tried that diet. When no, what is that? No younger. cheese or all cheese? No, Atkins is like no carbs. All you eat is like cheese. Basically like keto, but it's a cleaner keto, I think. And then there's like, what's another diet diet? Keto. Okay. These um, med- Mediterranean. Metabolic conditioning. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> That's a type of workout. Anyways, I've never. I mean, I've I've eaten like paleo. But paleo. I didn't Whole thirty. Consider that like a diet because it was more like a way of eating. Mm-hmm. Like you just didn't eat certain stuff. But anything that restricts a food group is a diet. Oh, but what if you forever? That's just you're like oh, ew. Then that yeah. Some That's people just do. your life. Yeah. Well. It's so, your life, except for on Thursdays when you go to Whataburger. <laughs> I, I am not, I am 100% not paleo or Whole30. I just basically am. I mean, I went to the grocery store today, and I didn't get hardly anything. It was like 125 bucks. Inflation. It is Ooh. bad. Hell. Anyway, that's why I'm just going to be going to Whataburger. Even um, though Whataburger has gone up from like 8.05 for what I get to like 8.47. Like, I can't. Well, I'm just about to do the Heaven's Gate diet and just drink lemonade, cayenne pepper, and water and or maple syrup. you could do... Oh, give me a new diet. The Way Down Diet. Okay, tell me. This diet, April, you do not have to count calories. You don't even have to work out. What? I know. You can eat whatever you want because no foods are bad. Okay. Because guess what? Jesus declared that all foods are good. Okay. So, I mean, it's a win-win. And you can eat pizza... And you can lose weight. Okay. And but what you basically do is you just you just wait until physical hunger okay. <laughs> strikes you. And then you eat until you're satisfied. Okay. But All still good information. Yeah. So if like, you know, some people call it like, oh, just like bored eating. Like I'm yes. just bored, so I'm just not eating. Well, if you get into that situation, you have to stop and pray. Oh. Okay. And, and you pray. And you give the desire for food to God. My mom and aunt all the time when there's like food in front of them and they're full, they'll say, Satan, get back. (laughs) Is that what she said? They literally are in this. It really is the devil. (laughs) But but like this is what it's all based on. She may be on to something. I might be joining this cult. (laughs) (laughs) Well... Let's start with Gwen Henley. And Stefani. Oh. And I would not do a goal with Gwen Stefani. Well, I would. I don't know why you wouldn't. She was born in Memphis, Tennessee, 1955, and her parents were super religious. They were from Church of Christ. Oh. So. Yes. So her father was a surgeon, 
and he would take her to like the hospital to do rounds with him. And she would, and like, she would, she would ask him like, Oh, how are you able to like cut people open? And like, he would say, well, I don't really focus on cutting people open. I focus on removing the bad. So basically she decided at that point that that's what she wanted to do was she wanted to remove the bad out of people, but not in a gruesome way. So she started working towards getting her master's in food and nutrition when she went to college and she ended up marrying David Shamblin in 1978. Okay. They had two kids, Michael and Elizabeth. There we go. Okay. So she continued school. She was a registered dietitian. She went to like, she started counseling kids at Memphis State University. And she basically was like, I'm a success story because when I went to college, I gained weight and then I lost weight and I kept it off. And so now I'm going to teach you how to do that successfully. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So in 1986, that was one year after my birth, Gwen (laughs) founded way down way do i need to spell it w-e-i-g-h way okay so this is a weight loss program and like it's it could be compared to what's called intuitive eating i had looked up so many things okay that's basically eat when you're hungry yeah like we're supposed to yeah so she would give diet tips like Telling people to like fill your plate with half size portions and just to eat slow, like slow down when you eat. And you know, all true stuff. April, she may be a genius. How do I eat when I eat my food? Y'all, she eats so slow and she basically plays in her food. I and let it get old. I slay it. I cut it up, don't I? I yes. cut it up and I cut it up and I make, I just cut it all up and make little pieces. Well, I was watching her interview with Tyra Banks because Gwen was on the Tyra Banks show. <laughs> and that's what she did. And she was like, Tyra was like, teach me how to eat the, how am I supposed to eat this hamburger and these French fries? And she literally was like, okay, well first cut it in half. Like I cut my hamburger in force. Uh-huh. Because I just don't have a big mouth, I guess. <laughs> so so I'm single. So she, so she cut it in half. And then she was like, well, cut that into another half. And then she cut little, she made that hamburger in little bitty pieces. She's what? like, so this is what you do. And she's like, you grab a French fry. And now you want to look at all the French fries. No, let me see. You want to look at all the French fries. <laughs> And you want to grab that French fry that has the most salt on it. And you want to hold that French fry up to the light right there. (laughs) And just, you want to take at least four bites of that French fry. Of one French fry? Four bites, April. Because you're supposed to. And then if you go to a restaurant and you got chips put in front of you, you want to get the best chip in the basket. <laughs> and you're going to hold that chip up and make sure it has all enough salt on it. She loves salt. Uh-huh. And she would salt. She loves some salt. I love me some salt, too. And you want to get the best chip out of that basket. And you got to eat that chip with four bites. <laughs> this was it, literally the interview. You have to eat it Can in four bites. Can you do the rest of the podcast I have, in that voice? Oh, I, for sure. I've already, I've been practicing. <laughs> I mean, it's great. So she would give diet tips, like I said, suggesting, basically she said, number one, you have to taste and savor each bite. You do, and you're supposed to chew and chew and chew. And and you just like, think about like, this is so great. And, you know, you just, you really you do fall, have to do that. Do you fall in love with each bite? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. And then... You know what? Number two, you remain in control and you can detect fullness better. Let me see. You remain in control and you can detect fullness better when you eat more slowly. You can. You Listen, can. I'm telling you. She has not told a story yet. The difference was Gwen's program was more than portion control. It was faith-based, and she believed that everyone needed to transfer their focus from food to God. Okay. I forgot to play the intro. Whoops. Well. Play it. And play. This is a legal video deposition of Gwen Chamblin on May the 23rd. Do you swear or affirm testimony about you giving this matter, me the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I did. 
to your knowledge, do any of the members of the Remnant Fellowship consider you to be a prophet? When Gwen first started, I truly believed she really wanted to help people. She was so charismatic. God revealed to me that the key to permanent weight control is a matter of the heart. God's taken 86 pounds off of me. I lost 196 pounds. It was just a massive media hit. Thousands of churches all over the country would have the Way Down workshops. From that point on, she began realizing it needs to be a new church. It is extremely unusual to have a religious group led by a woman. There are men who are elders of the entire church. But the truth of the matter is, I don't believe that Gwen is accountable to anybody. That's the reason I call her Gwen Almighty. She's going to decide whether you make it to heaven or not. Uh oh. How members of Remnant behave is a bit like Handmaid's Tale and Stepford Wives. They want you to be clones of them. It's all about appearances. The cross, the Bible, that's all sideshow. It's about money, prestige, power. That's her holy trinity. She's just playing God. It's wrecking families. It's wrecking kids. The church didn't lead me in the damn right direction. The church was leading me to go hang myself in my own closet. You talk to your kids about drugs and alcohol, but you never think to coach your kids on a cult. Remnant Fellowship is now part of a murder investigation. The child's death put the focus on how the Remnant Fellowship taught its members to discipline their children. There's no telling what actually did go down, but I firmly believe that they did whatever Gwen told them to do. Got a child that's going from bizarre down to in control. So I'll praise God. For me, the devil is a myth. But I've met Gwen Shamlin and she's real. How tall is her hair? Listen. I don't know. That's like old school this is southern the thing. girl. The hair grew taller as her cult grew larger. Ooh. So as she started gaining power, literally her hair would grow as she would grow. What? I don't know. So in Gwen's eyes, it didn't matter if you didn't worship the Christian God, if you didn't worship any God, she believed that people could overcome anything in their lives through her God. So this would have consequences later on. Who's her God? Well, it's she thinks she's a prophet. Oh. So she believed that eating disorders like anorexia and bulimia could be cured through her program. And by 1992, she started hosting way down workshops out of a garage. Okay. I mean, so she's she's going she's going for it. She's trying to just, you know, make it. She's trying to make it. She created the Way Down Workbook for clients to journal, and they would uh, they would do Bible studies around weight loss. And she started just talking about the that God told her people weren't consistently losing weight because they weren't being faithful to Him. Okay. So now she it says like the lady in the documentary was saying how she was charismatic, but I don't think she was that charismatic because she, I feel like she was more, at least some other people say she was more fear based or, or more shame based, Mm -hmm. which that makes sense. As far as like weight loss community, she would be shame based to motivate people. She knew her niche very well. Niche, niche, niche. And by 1997, the Way Down Workshop spread to over 30,000 weekly meetings in 70 countries. So it was good. It was like getting out there. And think about it like there's no like Twitter, there's no YouTube. So she's, they're having to make, they're like recording stuff on like videos and like VHS tapes uh-huh. and like sending them out to churches and all these things. So she's trying to get all these churches to share her curriculum and do it. And then she finally launched her first book. The Way Down Diet, which sold over a million copies. And this was what kind of like blew her up. She started appearing. She was on 2020. She was on Larry King Live. She was on the Tyra Banks show. She was their Dr. Oz back then. Not saying Dr. Oz is a cult leader, but remember he put yeah. down, out like this one book and then he was famous. And Yeah. Yep. Because, I mean, I think that was back, you know, people would... Do people really watch a lot of talk shows now? Oprah? So not. People lived by Oprah. Well, no, now. Uh-huh. Not now. Oprah's then? not on now. Is Oprah on now? 
Are you asking me? I'm just saying, like, currently, like, right now, uh-huh. there's not a lot of talk shows. But, like, back then, talk shows were oh, huge. And, yeah. But, yeah, it was a big deal that she was doing that. So she started signing books, and she started going. And, like, she would bring people up on stage and share their success stories. And that would be another way she would gain recognition. And she built a net worth of $5 million. But this was just the beginning. Uh-oh. So... In her Larry King Live interview, she said, I believe that we will always grow in love. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you seriously. You are so good. (laughs) I believe we will always grow in love. So if you stay in love with the refrigerator, you will look like the refrigerator. (laughs) If you fall in love with pornography, it'll grow worse. And if you fall in love with God, it gets better. <laughs> That's her quote. <laughs> She's literally dying. <laughs> I need you to record my voicemail <laughs> in that voice. So many people thought, or people that were involved in the Way Down Workshop believed that Gwen was put on this earth to change their lives. Like she reveled in her newfound fame. She was just all about it. She was promoting the idea that not only could she help people with weight loss, but with any problem, any addiction, like she was it. She knew she had the answers. And instead of like permanent weight loss, her message had started to include self-fulfillment through God. So around 1999, Gwen decided to start her church, Remnant Fellowship. Remnant. Remnant. Okay. So remnant, um, and then that word comes from the book of Revelation, where scripture tells the end of times, uh, and there's 144,000 faithful servants uh, that God will redeem. So bar- apparently it's like a big, excuse me, it's like a big deal that she named this church that. Okay. So she, this this kind of made some waves um, because what she did was she actually sent out a one of her weekly newsletters and she denied the Holy Trinity. So she was claiming that her ministries, so that would be the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Uh-huh. So she said that her ministries believed that the Holy Spirit and Jesus did not have equal leadership to God. And now whether one believes in Christianity or not, this is important because... What she was saying was, ultimately, she was bypassing the Trinity and setting herself up to be called a prophet under God. Mm. So a lot of Christians believe this to be blasphemy. Yes. And so people were outraged. People were sending back their books. They were sending back the curriculum. Churches and other people were calling up there, and they were... They were saying, oh, we're, she, like, evangelical leaders were comparing Gwen's beliefs to Jehovah's Witnesses, and employees were quitting, and churches were dropping left and right, and they pulled her books from publication, and they were like, we're not going to publish your next book. Or Good, whatever. you went a step too far. Like, Dr. Oz yeah. stuck with weight loss and yeah. health stuff. Yeah, this yeah. Bitch yeah. went she left. Got, she got a little too far, so... <laughs> When she was asked about how she felt about the backlash, she replied, Uh Uh-oh, I'm ready. Please do her voice. (laughs) People don't care about this. They don't care about the Trinity. This is going to pass. What women want is weight loss. They care about their bodies being a temple and their lives turn over to the Lord. And that's what my ministry is about. (laughs) Are fat people allowed to go to heaven in her cults? <laughs> uh, no, if you're fat, you have to go home and lose weight or you can't eat for like 40 days. <laughs> Is it 40 days because no. Jesus went 40 days? Without Listen, him? her husband was fat and never showed up at church. What? Listen, Gwen, so, there, so now there's a witch hunt and there's like churches are dropping left and right. And she's like, she's like, I don't care. They can just go down the street and they can just go to another church who's going to have my workshops. And then all of a sudden, click, another scandal comes along because now she has way down employees that 
they are starting to, they're filing lawsuits against her because what ha- what's happening is these employees are feeling pressure to join Remnant Fellowship and they're basically getting, like saying they're going to get fired if they don't join the church because oh. these are two separate things. So first we have uh, one lady who was fired because she would, on her lunch hour, she would like go, this is what it says. On one, she was fired because she used her lunch hour to pray. And Gwen told her that she pays people good money to pray and she did not need her prayers. And then <laughs> this other person, she ended up filing a lawsuit because she worked her way down for three years. She was eventually fired because she was a member of a Baptist church and she would not join Remnant Church. And so she was told that the company was moving in a different direction and her services were no longer needed. Wow. And that the position was going to be replaced by someone who was a member of Remnant Fellowship Church. And then in the middle of her being fired, she got a call from, or she got a letter from Gwen saying that HR made a mistake. She wasn't supposed to be fired. She was only supposed to be allowed to resign. And so they asked her to sign a letter saying that she resigned and she was never fired. Mm, but, she covered her but Anita... Uh She did not sign it because it was not the truth. And Gwen then personally called her to say if she didn't sign it, she was not going to get any money. Wow. And you know what? Anita was DTF. She was down to fight. Oh, come on, Anita. Mm -hmm. So she kept copies of the letters and the termination notice, and she sent them all, all to this attorney in Nashville, Gary Blackburn. Now, this guy, he was in the documentary, too. He's, he, What's his documentary called? The documentary is called The Way Down, W-A-Y. Okay. What about a play on words there, wow. HBO? And so this guy, he actually took on five uh, ex-employees' cases, and they basically put all their cases together, and he presented one lawsuit against her. Okay. So... From here, he had a deposition with her, and the this this employee wanted to do wanted her to be on video because she wanted her, or maybe it was the, well, somebody wanted her because they wanted to see her facial expressions and like how she would say things. So this is what one of the things I have a lot of quotes. Um, the the lawyer Gary asked Gwen a question about her practices, and. This is what Gwen said. When people were in prison camps and ate less food, they lost weight, all of them. And Gary was surprised by the answer because he asked, well, Miss Shamblin, currently you're making a comparison between the forced starvation of a population and middle class America's eating habits. Are you honestly doing that? And <laughs> Gwen replied, I have been for about 15 years <laughs> and a lot of people responded. And so that was her response. The oh lawsuit was finally settled out of court. Gwen was on a war path. She began preaching to her congregants and Christian churches. They were all in her attack. And she just was like, too many Christians are sinning due to them not being held accountable. So eventually she built this church. Now it's on 40 lakers of land. It's in Brentwood. Tennessee. Are we still in Tennessee? Okay. Tennessee. So it's one of the wealthiest counties in Tennessee. Now under this remnant fellowship umbrella and tax exempt status, Gwen also purchased a 25 acre civil war plantation home called Ashlawn. Okay. So that was about five minutes from the church. So Ashlawn has about seven bedrooms and it is also used for an event venue for remnant fellowship weddings. Okay. But Gwen didn't just build a church. Is it a compound? Girl, she built an industry. Okay. Under remnant, we have an umbrella with a financial planning company, a real estate company, a car repair company, a wedding and event venue, a homeschooling program, and a contracting company called Exodus Industries. And Exodus Industries... She built her empire. What Exodus Industries website states, 
that they provide cities, surrounding cities with electrical, plumbing, HVAC, roofing, architecture, concrete, and excavation services. A business for Jesus. <laughs> so basically, she's want, she's providing all of these services for her members so they don't have to go anywhere for anything. And they're like slowly like... Are they moving out there? I don't get it. I guess they all just live around the area. They all just live or or people are will move there have moved there from wherever they live to come to Tennessee maybe if they visit and then they're like oh I'm gonna join the church and then they were like oh basically I don't have to go anywhere for my other services so I'm just gonna go use the church and then they finally the church eventually starts guilting them into doing everything with them so she wanted to get their money for whatever they needed if you needed air conditioner yes get hers if you needed whatever okay She just wanted everybody's money. Everybody's money. (laughs) According to some ex-members, Gwen said she, yeah, this is what it, only wanted members to work in the business. So she wanted to build this large community that was fully efficient on its own without any outside help. And Oh, and they also had to work for her businesses. Yes. Okay. So they would also help, uh, other people like prepare their resumes. They would help with networking, interviewing, guidance for job searches. And they would just make sure that if it, like any a person was employed, if they needed help with employment in any situation. Did she open up a hairspray business? I think, listen, <laughs> her. That was Aquanet all the way. <laughs> this hair, y'all. Oh, go I... on and look at the pictures Caroline posted. It is <laughs> This goes beyond southern. No, I big have. Hair. I, I literally have a whole section that I wrote out about her hair because I was like, let's talk about the hair. It's like a visual of her ego because as the more that she became, uh, the more yes. self absorbed she became, the more maniacal her hair became, and the bigger it grew, and the higher it grew, and. She would get her hair and nails done like by church members. So she got all those services for free. So I'm pretty sure whoever did her hair hated her. They hated her. I'm looking up to see what kind of hair she wore. Like back in the day, she had nor she looked normal. Like she had looked like in the nineties, like nothing. She had normal face. She had normal hair. And then I feel like she got, she lost so much weight that her hair stopped growing. So I think it thinned out. So then for some reason, I don't know what happened if she like stuck her head out the damn airplane when her husband was flying the damn plane and like <laughs> blew it however it was shaped. I mean, cause it's like over, uh, like way <laughs> windblown. Like she's sticking her head out the window. Okay, wind do you blown. remember you might've been too young, but back in the day, if you wanted your hair really big, you'd spray it with hairspray and then you'd put the blow dryer on it and it would make it like stand yeah, up. Yeah, but it, like, like you can see the ex- like you can see the uh the tracks. You can see tracks in her hair. So bad. What about and her makeup out? is terrible and her face is white and it doesn't match the rest of her whole skin. People call her the ultimate Karen. <laughs> <laughs> the ultimate Karen. Well, so she wanted to. So basically they have this whole community. They have remnant fellowship and they're going to help you with everything. And, uh, so it's called Exodus industries is another one of their things. And that's where the other companies are available in the surrounding cities. And to nom like you can, if you're, even if you're not a remnant member, you can still come and use these places, right? Like their services. But remnant members are allegedly expected to only use the services within remnant fellowship. So non-members can use the services, but current members had to, had to had use to. the services. So, yeah. Uh, but this would mean that not only do these companies under remnant fellowship profit tax-free, but any of the money paid to the contractors allegedly goes right back into the organization. Mm. So Gwen was, what she was trying to do here is known as isolation and dependency tactic used in cults that makes members dependent on the head of the cult and those inside. Wow. 
Wow. I So know. she was a little bit more slick instead of like, like Marshall Applewhite was like, if you join us, you got to give me all your money, all your credit cards, ownership yes. of everything. She's just like, anything you have to buy is going to come to me anyways. And and I think that it's like, because she was this like petite little, old, like little white lady who had this like Southern draw. She wasn't like very intimidating. So people were maybe just more like. Trusted her. I guess. Maybe because of but a woman. But this was before her hair. <laughs> and maybe because of a woman, people are like, oh, no, a woman's not going to. Yeah. Take advantage, not, not be a cult leader and take advantage of us. I don't know. I just, when I'm watching this documentary, I'm thinking, why can they not just not go to church? Control. I, I don't, I don't know, but the way, I mean, it's crazy. So, um, if a member were to leave, not only would they lose their community, but they would lo- likely lose their livelihood. I mean, I don't get it, but that's what, I mean, being that their employment comes from inside of the cult. So I guess if they're employed there, but why would you work there? I guess if they move from far away to come be part of the church, then they would start working in the church. She was like, Oh, we'll give you a job at this HVAC place. And then you decided you wanted to leave. You're not just leaving a church. You're leaving your job. And then they're going to put the lawyers on you. Yeah. And then. So, so she's trapping them. So she's like, it's like a trap cult. Yes. And now a word from our sponsors. Rogecon 23. That's right. It is here. It's not back. It's here. It's the first one. Join the ultimate celebration of digital content with its creators, passionate fans, and industry experts. It is all happening in downtown Waco across multiple venues, January 20th, through the 22nd of 2023. Now, if you want to go, you got to get tickets, and tickets are on sale at roguecon23.com. That's roguecon, R-O-G-U-E-C-O-N 23.com. Be there. I'm going to be there. Everybody's going to be there. Let's go. Hi, I'm Hank. You might remember me from a show called King of the Hill. Check out Ma, a King of the Hill rewatch podcast. These boys ain't rap, but they are funny. Find the Ma podcast anywhere you get your podcasts or at roguemedianetwork.com. I tell you what. <laughs> hey, Caroline, do you love candles? Absolutely. Okay, well, so do I. There's an amazing local business called sassy queen candles owned and operated by latrinda peoples she's from here in waco sassy queen candles they offer an assortment of soy candles in various sizes wax melts and car fresheners all hand poured with love they have all the scents seasonal special requests and all just like the standard scents that you want check out the website that is sassyqueencandles.com, S-A-S-S-Y-Q-U-E-E-N, candles.com. And for updates, you should check out her Facebook and her Instagram. Follow Sassy on social media. Let's go light our candles. Cool. So these types of restraints allow the members to more easily be influenced due to their livelihood being on the line. So there we answered our own question. Wow. Um, so some members started to notice that Gwen would not really practice what she preached. So this is, let me introduce you to the real house housewives of remnant fellowship. <laughs> Their hair was perfect. Ooh. <laughs> Their bodies were trim. Okay. They submit to their husbands and their children are well-behaved. Obedience. Oh, like Stepford wives. Very much so. Wow. So some, there's all these ex-members, some ex-members decided to follow Gwen because she was always like so happy, so positive, and they wanted that for themselves. Obviously, who doesn't? So um, some stuff started brewing and some FBI 
would somehow start to be getting involved. And according to the HBO documentary, Gwen would, t- she told members who didn't lose two pounds a week needed to begin fasting. <laughs> you didn't lose two pounds a week. You needed to begin fasting. So one ex member said that sometimes fasting, uh, you would have to fast up to 40 days. Wow. Yes. This is from the documentary. And that same member was also told to quit eating after she had already lost 130 pounds in 18 months just so she could continue losing weight. So on top of weekly tithing, ex-members say that Gwen demanded that everyone begin taking this way down workshop classes and, but the, but the cost of it, like you had to pay cost of the books and the workshops and to be on the website, there's like this TV subscription. So it's like 1999 a month or $230 a year. Wow. And that, yeah, way down TV. And Gwen told them instead of, <laughs> she said, instead of buying extra food this week, buy this book <laughs> and keep it by your side. <laughs> You won't need the food. <laughs> you just keep the book there. It was heavily implied throughout the remnant church that the faster you lost weight, the holier you were. So Gwen told members, you don't make the church look good if you're overweight <laughs> or if your children are not obedient. So in 2003, the FBI raided the Way Down Ministries and Remnant Fellowship. Because we have Joseph and Sonia Smith. Okay. They were devout members of Remnant Fellowship and the couple, they were on, they were part of like way down success stories. So they would be like on stage talking about how Joseph lost like 30 pounds and one of them lost a hundred pounds or something. And so they ended up that this is, this is from Gwen. Okay. Okay, I'm trying to figure out which part I want to tell you first. So, basically, they were, I think I already said this in the beginning, uh, Yeah, the other podcast. They were sentenced to life in prison for basically for what they did. Joseph and Anna were? Joseph and Sonia. And Sonia. So, they were members of the church, and Gwen, they would call in. To Gwen, like there's, I guess she would do like live um, call in lines. I don't Uh know. And they would say, well, we're trying to get our son to be obedient. And there's this other leader of the church called named Ted Anger. And they're like, well, we followed what Ted said. And he said that we needed to have a showdown with our child. Uh And a showdown meant you would spank your kid over and over and over and Uh, over and over and over six times over. Wow. And you would make sure that they were obedient. And if you needed to, you would whip them with a refrigerator cord or you would. Are these black parents? Well, (laughs) actually they were. (laughs) When you say refrigerator cord, I was like, uh Oh, (laughs) and so um (laughs) yes and so yeah so then it was so this is what this is what Gwen was had said in one of her interviews this is God's word I didn't come up with spankings (laughs) I'm not going to hide the fact that the good Lord says do not spare the rod if you're not scared of a spanking, you haven't spanked them. If you haven't really spanked them, then you don't love them. You love yourself. So. Okay. And remnant, the Todd anger, this guy, he said, as far as the pat on the bottom as a last resort, it's always in love. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't pat on the bottom. So they denied over and over that they advocated for parents like repeating and spanking their children. Like they, they, they were accused and of saying all these things. And they were like, well, cause the lady had, when Sonia called, she said, we took Ted's advice and we put Joseph and we put him in his room with his Bible 
from Friday and we didn't let him out until Sunday. We took everything out of his room but the Bible. and we put him with his Bible in his room. Mm-hmm. That's going to make Joseph hate the Bible. Well, and it also killed Joseph because they also, what they really did, this is what was later found in the court proceedings, was that they put him in a trunk, like a <gasps> treasure trunk, and they wrapped it up with bungee cords. Oh, my gosh. And then they, when they finally went back, I'm, so I guess they put him in this trunk and left him in his room, put the Bible in the, I mean, and then wrapped it up and then he suffocated. Oh. But then when they found him, he had the most like just marks all over his body. Marks, they marks, marks. Cause him. they had beat him, beat him, beat him, beat him. Mm. I would, yeah. Terrible. And, uh, just a few, I think it was within maybe like the month, like maybe three weeks to four weeks before he died, they had a baby die of SIDS. The fa- the same family? The same family. So they had two kids die within like a couple of months. Mm-hmm. Like that's not really that normal. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah. So what Gwen, what they're, they were saying that, the tapes of so whenever Sonia had called Gwen and they were on this it was all recorded so then when they're getting interviewed and they're getting asked about these conversations they're like well you've said it right here like you're saying praise God for what you did praise God for what you did and they're like how do you respond to that like you didn't tell her not to do that you like agreed that that's what she should do and she was like oh no those tapes were manipulated that's not what I said, that's not how that came out. Those were manipulated. She said this was called gotcha journalism. <laughs> and she said that. Is that like fake news? Yes. That <laughs> she basically started fake news. She said that the, like, the passing of eight-year-old, because this kid was eight years old, Joseph. Oh, Joseph. He, and that she said that it was like it was not. Anything had nothing to do with them, had nothing to do with the church, and that's not what they preach to other people. So the church and Gwen, what they weren't charged with anything, but the Smiths, like I said, were they got life in prison. They got what did I say? They they got? 30 years. You just said life. Oh, yeah, they got life plus 30 years, plus 30 years. So Wow. What is weird is that Gwen and they paid for all their legal fees. They paid for the Smiths. They paid for their whole proceedings. Way down did? Way down, yes. So they also created a website defending the Smiths, claiming that the family basically claiming that the police, the FBI and all the investigative journalists misled the public in the court. And the website wow. is the Smiths are dot com. Still Looking running today. Looking it up. Yeah. Here's what's crazy is had the Smiths had a good lawyer and where they could turn it around on the cult. Well, that's what they, it, the thing is, is because the, their lawyer, like they were represented by the. Way down lawyer. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like yeah. if they would have had a decent lawyer that wasn't paid by way down. Yeah. And that they were whatever brainwashed, coerced, facilitated by them. Then mm-hmm. they might not have gotten life to 30 years. Maybe they so. Oh, I for sure think so. Oh, my goodness. Which, I mean, I don't give a shit what you say. You can't tell me to put my kid in a trunk. I mean, I might just decide to do it on my own. But yeah. nobody can tell me and make me do that and kill my kid. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. So the website basically explains, like, what happened. And it Wait, claims, what's it called again? Uh, the, the Smiths are innocent.com. Okay. Just like it's just like it said. Um, and so while they're claiming that they're the website, yeah, explains that what happened and just saying that it's all rumors. Oh, Does it, bonito. 
Um, there looks like there's a 911 call. Did you ever listen to that? No, I didn't actually. But the it's oh the four minute 911 wow. call. That's crazy. The coroner and the judge refuted what the Smiths and Gwen said happened, and they were saying that this like horrible story of the day. I mean, it just it. It basically the website goes on to talk about how like Joseph, like the dad and the mom lost all this weight and it talks about how you can join the way down workshop. And then it goes and has like, you can like go directly to Gwen's website and the curriculum and blah, blah, blah. Like, so it's basically another way to promote the way down workshop and to get more money. That website is <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. So said he died of septic shock like a fast acting infection and septic shock maybe from all the um that's what they say bruises go watch the documentary on hbo and i'll show you all the all the evidence wow yeah so then we get to you know not only did gwen's congregation and profits grow throughout the years so did her hair <laughs> and her assets. So let's just take a moment and talk about all those things. As long as her ass didn't grow. Her, her ass, ass did not grow because, you know, if it did, she could not be part of this church anymore. She, I wonder if she deep down had an eating disorder. Oh, for sure. It's a very negative. Go look at her pictures. Like, go look. Type in she Gwen sunk, and Joe Laura and look. Just really get a good deep dive. So her... She built a fortune that included over 18 properties outside of Remnant Fellowship and she put in that she put in a trust. So other, other than her weight, she loved to live large and in charge. Uh, I mean, she would have parties and they would have alcohol and it would just be oh. celebrate. Yeah. I mean, it would have like there would be de it would be decorated to the max. She would get her hair done and her makeup done for free by church members, like I said, which obviously they hated her. And uh, she just thought that Remnant, it was just great. Remnant Fellowship hosted festivals. They would bring, like, they would have weddings. They they did this one festival called the God is So Good Festival. And it was a, God the God is So Good Festival. <clears throat> it was at this specific festival that she told church members not to bring gift baskets anymore, only money. <laughs> Like every year they would bring money and then like 2019 she's like, oh, excuse me, can you just bring money only and no more baskets? I went to a church one time when I was younger and, you know, you do like offering and this preacher said nobody can leave until they get 65 more dollars to help with the building fund. And I was like, wait, we're, I was like in high school, so I didn't have any money. I was just visiting. <laughs> Like, how do you say the doors of the church are not open until we get $65 more? I don't know, but he sure did. <laughs> he got it and we got to leave. So Gwen took the Bible. <laughs> Literally, she believed in blessings for obedience and curses for disobedience. So if anything, when anything bad happened to Remnant, oh, this is crazy. When anything bad happened in Remnant Fellowship or someone in it, the members had been indoctrinated by Gwen to believe that it was because of their sins and God's judgment. So Gwen's daughter had a baby. Okay. okay. The, had a wedlock. No. Oh, the baby ended up dying. Uh oh, and what they did was like, they just com completely ignore like the service that next week, they completely ignored it because what they do is they just act like always everything's great. Everything's great. Everything's perfect. We're perfect. We live our best life. This didn't happen. We're not talking about it. Yeah. Wow. So what they did was would go to some of the members who were being disobedient and kind of basically accuse them of it. It wasn't anybody, it wasn't Gwen's fault. It was, whose fault was it? Why did God bring judgment against this church and kill that baby? Oh. What? Yes. Yes. So, 
it would like they would look for somebody to bl- basically looking for somebody to blame yeah. for what happened because yeah. it, they were like, well, it's not us. So obviously it must be something that's wrong with you because your husband has been talking to one of the leadership. So I'm getting ahead of myself because I've been way too into it. So, <laughs> so there's a hierarchy in this church and basically Gwen's the top and she, everybody who was all of the leaders that she appointed were all men. Okay. Okay. So as you, you appoint all these people, they're all male leaders and these leaders were assigned to different people. Like, like each church member had a different group, like a tree, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like a person that they would go to and that was their group leader who they would go to about all their problems, anything that was going on in their life. Yeah. So, but in these leaders reported directly to Gwen. Okay. So. One day, the leaders were told about the news of the grandchild passing away from this illness, and they were asked to pray. So the next Sunday, um, like I said, they didn't speak about the death. So they, they told the members to, like, just don't mention it. Everything's fine. And basically, they lived under this uh, delusion of denial mm-hmm. and just everything we're all happy so toxic positivity basically is what they called it wow yeah so dismissing negative emotions and responding to distress with false reassurances rather than empathy it's common in like not like christian but like very religious households anyways it's like you don't talk about it with anybody else you just pray about it yeah and leave it alone and don't acknowledge yep so Okay, they called in this this lady. Who, she's in the documentary, and she was called into the leader's office. Just a, a lady who has worked there, who's been an employee. Um, so she and her husband were called into the church for a family checkup. The leaders basically implied that Gwen's family was not being judged, and but by God, so it had to be someone from within the church oh, shit. who were bringing in the struggles and they had to assess how this family was doing. Okay. Oh gosh. So they were like, because God is bringing judgment on this church, we want to know where it's coming from. So yes, Gwen <laughs> is it blaming me. the passing of a family member on her congregants. Oh my goodness. And life at Remnant Fellowship was all about submitting to authority. So if a church member needed counseling, they allegedly were not allowed to seek help from a therapist in fear of retribution. They were instead supposed to call their church leader to receive counseling from him, even though the leaders weren't licensed therapists or psychologists. And if they had like issues in their marriage and like if a spouse were to like seek counseling, like, no, they have to go to the church leader. Everything's the church leader. If. Wow. Yeah. Everything's church leader. So the leaders were like in daily communication with their members, text, emails, phone calls. They controlled their social media accounts. If there was even a picture on the, on the documentary talking about if they like, uh, are you sure you need to have this Facebook account? Like, did you check it over with blah, 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 and wow. just want to make sure that you're checking it so over much control. It's crazy. So, uh, some of the ex members, cause this is all coming from ex members, like all these stories. Okay. Um, they, they told you how they could never go against their husband's wishes. So they were supposed to ask their husband about something once and never ask it again, no matter what his decision was, he no would way. have to go, you would have to do whatever he said. They weren't, they were submissive to husbands. They, oh, I was in this cult till that part. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, a lot of them said that they had to stay in their marriages, even if they were cheated on. They could, the husbands could have multiple affairs. Like this one lady who's talking about this, she was like, it was so awful. He, I, I, I did not want to have, oh my gosh, one lady, like she was told to get off her depression medication. They were like, Prozac, you don't need to be <laughs> taking that Prozac. You don't need to be taking that Prozac. And like, she tricked herself into like the 
crazy, like into the psychiatric ward. Uh-huh. And then she ended up being like roommate with like some lady who was smearing poop on the wall and like all this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> she called her husband so the men could sleep with other women in the church yeah. only or just no, anybody I don't know. or Gwen I, they, they probably just slept with Gwen and her hair I don't know who they slept with or if it each was just one got uh, they just track. liked the hair yeah each man got a different <laughs> when they left they I got know. a different track I mean like it's it's crazy like the one lady who was in the psych ward Called her husband. She was like, I, "Get me out of this place." Even though she turned herself into that place because she was, she was on medication. And then the church made her get off the medication, and then she like went crazy and went to the psych ward. And like, husband, come get me. And he's like, "Well, I talked to the church leader, and he said that you just need to burn in hell." Like, <laughs> <what>? <laughs> I can't even. That's what they get. And so <laughs> the. So Gwen preached the importance of having a conservative heterosexual family unit where the wife was submissive unto her husband. But guess what? Gwen's husband did not come around because even though he has his master's in divinity, like he's the one who should be like in charge of this whole thing. But he didn't like how Gwen was mixing church with money. No. Also, he was overweight. (laughs) <laughs> wait this is Gwen who husband, husband okay who she he's never to be like he's bare he's like nowhere you never see him she's probably like you're not allowed he's to probably come around literally inside of her hair <laughs> that's where he hides, she that's hides where him. she hides him because but she's like my people can't see you if you're overweight <laughs> he would never be he wasn't fitting in and so yeah he's gone but guess what Guess what, April? What is what? she going to do now? You know, she preached over and over that you have a strong family unit and that divorce is wrong under any circumstances. That is what she believed. Wholehearted. You let your husband cheat on you. You let him play with my tracks. <laughs> and now she's going through the big D. Guess and I what? I don't mean Dallas. <laughs> She (laughs) was married to this guy, David Chamblin, for 40 years. 40? 40. I don't even know how old she was when she died. Uh. (laughs) What? Is she dead? I thought she was going to friend us on Facebook. Okay. She probably lied about her age. Until the day that Joe Laura came to church. So she got a divorce from her husband from 40 years. Because... Joe Lorick showed up to church. Oh, okay. so she sees this guy coming to church and she's like, Hey daddy. <laughs> so she could have a, this woman can have a side piece, but the other women can't. So yeah, she was saying like, you cannot divorce. You let your husband do what he wants to do. And then she basically like would go and travel and do all these things, but you never saw her husband because he's fat. And so he's over there. So he's not in the picture. So I'm assuming when she saw this guy coming to church, she was like, mm, okay, I think it's time for me to get divorced. Now I need to see what he looks like. Oh, basically he played uh, Tarzan. He was a, he, so this is Joe what? Lawrence. He was a man. No, who, I need to see what the first husband looks like first. Oh, okay. See if he really was like fat or was he. Yeah, there is. Oh, <laughs> that would fall into it. So this guy in his younger days, Joe Laura, he worked in Hollywood. He appeared in like low budget films. He played the role Tarzan of the, he played the starring role of Tarzan in Manhattan. American oh. actor. I mean, this is <laughs> the craziest story. So he, listen, his biggest role oh, yet pretty. was he was pretty. And then he cut his hair and made it all greasy. When it was long. So what happened, he actually was married. When he was young, he was married to a CE. This, no, scratch that. When Joe was young, his mother was married to a wealthy CEO of Wells Fargo Bank. His family lived in Newport Beach, California. His stepdad owned race cars, private plane. So he basically got used to this lifestyle, right? Okay. And so in his 20s, 
he dated this 50 year old actress, Dory Forsman. So she bought him a Harley Davidson and let him live in her house. He didn't have to do any acting gigs because he was like going to be an actor. He spent all of his days writing like at Dory's, like writing his Harley Davidson. And then he was like living at her house and then he didn't have any acting jobs. And so he's a gold digger. What's the the male version of a gold digger? Is Is it still a gold digger? I guess you're just a lazy asshole. I don't know. (laughs) So all of a sudden, their relationship ends. Nobody really knows why. And then one night, he was kicked out of the house. And this lady, Dory, set his Harley Davidson that she bought him on fire. So you go, girl. So he was known to, like, live with all these women he dated until finally he bought his own double-wide trailer. Uh Uh-oh. In the desert where he was enjoying his freedom of falconry and flying. What the hell is falconry? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> he's, I guess, played with falcons. Uh, <laughs> you're going to have to Google everything. Google it. As soon as I close my iPad, I open it right back up. <laughs> so, he, so he had his pilot's license. So he had, um, after, so he got, after this, he got, Started dating this other lady. He had a baby with her. He moved in with her. He plays with birds. You're right. Yeah. I mean, it's Falcons. Oh. I don't know. Atlanta Falcons? They fly? That's still a team. Yeah, they're terrible. But, okay, so now he's dating this girl, Natasha. He has a baby with her. They start having all these issues because... Wait, now I missed it. What happened to him and Gwen? No, so he Googling. he was dating this chick old named lady. Dory, okay. the old fifty year old. Then he bought a trailer. And Dory got pissed. We don't know why, because she, she had bought him a motorcycle. She set his motorcycle on fire because he was a parasite. Basically, because he's a parasite. Then he's like, "Bye, bitch! I'm gonna go live in my double wide." He moves to the desert, starts playing with birds, playing with birds. and starts flying planes. Because now he thinks he's a pilot. Because okay. like he's trying to be an actor and he's trying to be country music. We don't know what the hell he's trying to be, but he's trying to do something. So then he starts dating this other chick in Nashville. Okay, her name is Natasha. She's like this beauty queen. She's like Miss America and all these probably Miss Nashville, whatever. So she ends up that she's. She's paying all the bills. What a shock. Uh, they She gets pregnant, has a baby. I mean, she was with him and then separated and then got together again. Well, now she, Joe goes to the church. Okay. He's not religious. But so he's broke up with that girl, but he has a baby. And he's trying to like, now he's going to try, try to start fighting for the child. He go Yeah. 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 We don't know. So he... Goes and he goes to the church. He never really went to church. So (laughs) it's great. Nobody knows him. So he starts and he's like, oh, uh, I'm going to start going to church and I'm working as a handyman. Like, okay, good job. And, And he's now a country music star. In his own mind. So I guess he's like walking in the church, like playing his guitar with his hammer. I don't know. <laughs> and so he is introduced to Gwen. Gwen saw Joe. And Joe wondered how much Gwen was hiding in all that hair. <laughs> and suddenly, Gwen's sermons on divorce completely changed. Because oh. this is when she decided, um, I feel like it's okay if you get divorced. Yeah. 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 Go yeah. ahead and get Get all the divorces. Yep. So they had uh, to split up 18 pieces of property, about $20 million worth of real estate. And she gave David over $3 million in cash. Go ahead, David. Yep. He's like, bye, bitch. (laughs) So Gwen and Joe, the devout husband that he's going to be. I mean, look how strategic he is. Look at that. They even posted this like engagement video. Where it's literally like he, go, I mean, it's completely staged. He like dramatically goes down on one knee and she like goes, <gasps> like <laughs> holds gasps, her heart, holds gasp. her heart. And he goes down and she looks up and she's like, oh my 
God. Does he have on his Tarzan? And uniform? then he's down. She grabs him by the chin, like the jaw, yeah. and like picks him up and like kisses him as he's as she, he's standing. I mean, it's awful. So obviously yeah. everybody's suspicious of this guy because like he's never religious. He starts speaking on stage and it's so weird. So it's, this is less than 60 days after her divorce and she's already like ha- having the fanciest wedding and like it's to the max 1500 people. She had 30 something flower girls, 15 bridesmaids. She was covered and head to toe and all this stuff. I mean, it was too just, much. yes, too much. So during the sermon, uh, after her divorce, somebody was like, well, this is, there's obviously a case of, there was obviously cases of divorce that God allows as much as, oh, that's what she said. She basically was like, there's obviously cases of divorce that God allows as much as he hates it. But she just wanted the, she just Gwen wanted more than just attention. Yes, yes, yes. So what had happened was Joe and Joe and Natasha, like Joe started, he was like, I want custody of this kid. I want custody of the kid. And he wasn't getting it. And so he accused Natasha of sex, sexually abusing their daughter. Like what? Yeah. So luckily like this girl was, she was Miss California. She was Miss Universe. Um, and then like Joe told the police all of this stuff. And like the daughter had to watch Natasha get handcuffed and taken away. Uh, and luckily the police saw like, they were like, no, we don't yeah. believe you. You're an idiot. And uh, Natasha was innocent and cleared of all the charges. Okay, good. So, <sighs> We're getting close. Custody battle is happening. The handyman and the wealthy preachers, powerful attorneys. Like now she's like putting her attorneys after Natasha. Like they spent, she spent, Natasha spent $200,000 of her own money trying to like fight to get custody. I guess they still split it, but she's like attorney's fees and everything. She's getting nowhere. So she, I don't want my kid part of this call. Yes. 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 So she represented herself and then like it found she claimed that her daughter was anytime that the daughter was with Gwen and Joe, she was not allowed to have any people from outside remnant. Like she wasn't allowed to participate in any events. Like she wasn't allowed to go anywhere, do anything other than stuff the church. Um, And so, yeah, the, they like, it was like, it was a nasty, nasty fight. Um, And the Gwen and Joe just wanted they just wanted the kid for themselves. But April, <laughs> as of May 2021, what? The that live was the other day of Gwen and Joe, the show would go no further. What happened? Gwen and Joe, along with five other members of Remnant Fellowship Church, Boarded a small plane. You know, Joe, the pilot that he is. (laughs) With Joe driving it. (laughs) Was flying the plane. (laughs) And luckily, Natasha and Joe's daughter, because Joe wanted to fly the daughter. But luckily. Good, 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 good. So. (sighs) They were flying from Tennessee to attend. A Trump rally. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that would get you. <laughs> She's like, we have so much in common. <laughs> Let's go. So, were they about to go and board? Uh, what's it called? What did they do to the? They Pentagon? were on their MAGA flight. <laughs> Listen. I ain't saying Joe Biden is anything. Like, he's terrible. They're no, all, neither one of them. all I'm terrible. Full of shit. But it's just really, really <laughs> coincidental <laughs> that they're on this flight to attend a drum rally in Florida. <laughs> and Joe was a pilot. And he never. Not Joe Biden. <laughs> <laughs> Not Joe Biden. Not Joe Rogan. <laughs> Joe Laura. 
He never got them out of Tennessee. The plane crashed into a lake. Joe, Joe, whatever his name, Laura, received his pilot license when he was 16 years old. He has this, like, when you have your pilot's license, you must have a medical certificate, and it has to be renewed every two years. But guess what? The medical certificate was expired. And less than a month after the plane crash, the FAA suspended the guy who gave this Joe, his like examiner, like who approved him to fly. Yeah. He like he was. But why? Sued. What was the medical issue? I don't what know. He it? just never got it. He never. It was expired. And okay. I guess the dude let him still fly. Anyways, out out of all the seven people on board, there was not a single survivor. Wow. And this is the most ironic twist of fate that it was reported that the plane went down because it was overweight <gasps> and capacity. What? This is God, like, <laughs> like striking you down. Like that you must is be the way down. W a y down. I know that's the name HBO of the show. Killed it. How great! Uh, so where does this leave Remnant Fellowship? Okay, well, ah, uh, after. Okay, so Elizabeth was the daughter. And she had been on stage before and she had said that like, like, she's like, oh, this is like my mom, like Gwen's never going to give us the, her, she'll never leave a single cent of her real estate to Michael or I, like, it's going to all go like, we're going to never get any of the inheritance. The daughter and the son. Yeah. Elizabeth and Michael. Yeah. Okay. So basically Gwen had been grooming Elizabeth to take over Remnant and she was saying on stage, I mean, she practically handed Michael and I's inheritance away, you know, because apparently they weren't going to get it. It was all going to go to the church. Well, little did they know this was going to be coming back to bite them so fast because that was a lie. And instead of giving her, uh, luxury real estates and her multi-million dollar fortune, which was like $20 million to remnant fellowship, she gave the church publishing rights to the Way Down Workshop, Way Down Books, and merchandise. And that's all. Everything else went to the kids. Oh, good. Right. And it basically, I don't know how all but this are works. They still, do they think like her and they run in? Well, the I don't know. The whole thing was apparently it's a big deal because she was saying she was going to leave all her money to the church. And she wasn't going to leave it to her kids. I don't know why you won't leave your money to your kids. I thought that was normal. Okay. But they find out that she didn't leave any money to the church. She left basically books and merchandise to the church. I I don't know. And so this was this as the interesting thing was when she when she had that plane crash, she was like three weeks into filming a, like a video series on greed. And she was urging all the congregants to give up their money. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this daughter. She's, yeah. A, she had a eating disorder too. Oh, for sure. She looks like she hates. Skeletal. Is that her husband? Cause yeah. he was on the flight. Oh, her, I'm Elizabeth's pretty sure. Husband died yeah. On the flight. I think that's, Oh, Jesus said, do not play with me. <clears throat> oh, it, yeah, it's real bad. So Gwen basically, uh, she told people that she was a prophet and she led people to believe that being thin, sometimes through th dangerous methods, uh, made a person holier and more righteous. And so in the aftermath of hurting all these people and betraying her teachings and, it was just made even worse for women, women and children. She made promises she couldn't keep, constantly keep up appearances by hiding what she considered the bad and living this life of luxury and all this stuff. So let me tell you, there's right now there are three episodes of The Way Down on the HBO documentary. Oh, so there's multiple? So there's, yeah, there's three episodes and it was released in September 2021. Okay, okay, so the crash was in May. Yeah. Documentaries released in September, which they 
were originally going to release four episodes, but then they had to redo everything because this crash and because now they died. And now a lot more people were, are not scared to come forward. Uh And so now they're like free to talk. So instead of four episodes, now there's, so there's episodes four and five that are supposed to come out like in the next few weeks. Wow. So we get to continue the story. (laughs) Yes. Follow up. It, I can't help but wonder if somebody, if that plane, I mean, di- if somebody did something to that plane. It was probably Natasha. I she, was thinking, is Natasha listen, the real MVP? M- Natasha is the real <laughs> MVP for sure. And was Joe, wait, Laura, what's the husband's name? Yeah, Joe Laura. Was he the tender swindler? He probably was. <laughs> I think Gwen was the tender swindler. Mm. Listen, I talked, I put that on that my is the best Instagram. Story. <laughs> Wasn't it? It no, was so, way down was the I know, best I know. story. Yes. But it, cause it's unexpected. There's a, so many twists and turns and there are so many people who on like different YouTube videos of the story who were like, I was in that cult. I went there. I attended those meetings. I did this. Cause you don't have to be in Nashville. I mean, you can. Which, yeah, I don't I just, it was so widespread, but so many people were like, they were like, oh, that's not a big, like some people would say, oh, that's, that wasn't such a big case. Like you need to talk about other ones. Like these are bigger when they're like, no, you don't understand this. This was bad. And this lady, like, I mean, Kate's had a died. bunch of, well, like, and she had like, she built this whole like community empire. Kind of. I know. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Like, who thinks of that? What I just think about is, like, these people are brilliant. Like, look at their leadership skills. If they just were positive. She started off positive, I think. Like, but she couldn't handle the the power. And she couldn't handle, like, she just had to keep buying more and more hairspray. Yes. And as her hair got bigger and her empire got it's just. But if you can do what you did. In a negative way, just imagine what you can do. And that's probably why that plane went down. It's like, I gave you these skills, yep. gift of mouth, gift of leadership, and you did me wrong. 100%. Bye, bitch. She gone. She gone. Sure, crashed crash in the lake. That is so good. I know. <laughs> okay, y'all, you have to tell us who is more most likely to join this cult. I, I, I mean... She mm. had a lot of good things to say. <laughs> but she was crazy. Really I'm not it. gonna leave my I'm not gonna leave my church to join her, but she's she tempted. Had a lot of truth. She yeah. wasn't crazy like UFO. Listen, crazy. I would, I'm interested on a UFO. <laughs> <laughs> Caroline thinks Marshall Applewhite is in the UFO right now, and that's why she's yeah. able, he's yeah, able he to is. Facebook us. Yeah. Um <laughs> what okay, so we're gonna put a new poll. Am I more likely to be in the way down? I need to lose the most weight, so probably (laughs) so. Or is it Caroline? So new poll coming up. Go and vote. Um, Also, look forward to, we're going to get a little kinky next week at this next cult. So listen, it's going to be very rated I wonder who's going to be in that one. (laughs) Who's going to be nominated to be in that cult? It's going to get very rated You're talking about that stuff, girl. It's a little crazy. Um, can y'all go and watch the Tinder Swindler and start a conversation about that? Me and Caroline watched yes. that this weekend. Oh and my gosh. It is crazy. I'm pissed about it too. We won't spoil it, but go watch that and go watch The Way Down on yes. HBO because not only that, because there there's going to be two more episodes that are coming out. And then do you know who uh, Tammy Faye Baker Carla Faye Baker? Tammy. Carla Faye Tammy Faye Baker. Ba- <laughs> but Al does. I mean, Mike does. She know he knows Tammy Faye Baker. I think he dated her. <laughs> <coughs> what did she do? So she was an evangelicalist. Evangelist? Uh-huh. Evangel what's the word? Whatever she was. She was like on the church network. <laughs> yes. And she would like give up. But but there was just this new show that came out on HBO, a new movie, The Eyes of Tammy Faye. <coughs> and so I, uh-huh. I'm as I'm as I woke up at four o'clock this morning for no reason. 
I was just looking at what was on HBO, and apparently she was like super, like oh, a her. good, like everybody loved her. She was genuine. She loved everybody, and she wasn't like full of like everybody loved her. Like she was legit, like yeah. a lovable, likable person, even all the comments. But That's anyways, there's this big show that there's this show that was released on HBO about her and her life. Apparently, her husband like cheated on her and like was with guys and was gay and then was like stealing money from the whole, um, from their whole church and everything. So hey, it, any, oh. any time you want to talk, Jim and Tammy Faye Baker, <gasps> I'm your man <laughs> because there's a documentary and then there's the feature length film now. And remember I lived through all of it. So. Oh, wow. See, so would she fall under these? Um, no, but isn't she crazy? like not crazy? She's no. just like She's a nuts. Both of them are nuts, but oh. <laughs> I don't think they killed anybody. But would she fall but under people like really the, liked her? These mega church type things, oh, like yeah. um, Joel park. Austin. They had a theme park. Wow. So yeah. these people like buying planes, and that's what's that's a whole other co- conspiracy theory is like the Joel Austin. Like, oh, story he had money in the, the walls Kreslo or something. Dollar story and like him needing a mill yeah it's it's a black preacher that but he was like the equivalent to joel alstein but he was a black one and begging for a million dollars to buy a jet and jesus told him he needed a jet and just all these other like mega churches preachers that start off but then the money it goes crazy like one of them cheated on his wife and bought her a lamborghini and said jesus told him to (laughs) it's like it's so crazy Oh and gosh. so me thinking of these, like reading about these cults, and so I'll, I'm just like, how far does it go? Oh, like I love me some TD Jakes, but is he is he going to be the next like mega church to do something crazy? Probably, because I used to love some Joel Osteen, and then what's the woman? What's the woman, Mike, with the eyebrow, with the lips and the eyebrows? Joyce Meyer. Oh, I don't know her. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she Tammy Joyce Faze. Meyer every day. There was a Tammy Faye's the OG though. She's the OG. And then what's the um, Swagger Jimmy Swagger? Would he fall under that category? No, but Jimmy Swagger saw a seventy-three foot tall Jesus. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's very tall. <laughs> After See? paying a bunch of prostitutes. Hey. See. Well. I don't know, but I heard about Joel Osteen. They found money in his wall. They did. So I don't know what that even was about and why I didn't hear a lot about it. We may, we may I don't think do it a was whole episode trending. I mean, it's in Houston. We could go. We could go to a circle. Are we going to check the walls? Yes. We'll bring a sledgehammer. <laughs> Y'all, that was great. Let us know how you loved this Gwen Chamlin episode. Caroline, what do they need to forget to n- not forget to do? Uh, rate, review, and subscribe. Listen, that is how we move up the Apple. Oh, we said we we're going to read things, but we forgot. So we'll read them next time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's how we move up the podcast ladder. So we need all the rates, all the reviews, all the subscribes. Yes. We also are looking for sponsors right now. So if you want your episode, your business or anything read as an ad on our podcast, then send us an email, bloody happy hour at gmail.com. We'll get with you with that and we'll get some ads going. And this can be like small businesses, your own personal whatever business. Like yeah. Yeah. Anything. We'll read if you're your, a televangelist. Please if you're a televangelist. In. Yeah. Well, maybe tell we'll read your, your ad. <laughs> tell us your favorite Bible quote like David Grish did. <laughs> Um, don't forget to stay aware, stay alive, and always be DTF. Bye, y'all. Bye. Bye, (laughs) y'all. And, and praise God. Praise God. This has been a Rogue Media Podcast.
Join the ultimate celebration of digital content with its creators, passionate fans, and industry experts. It's all happening in downtown Waco across multiple venues on January 20th through the 22nd, 2023. Tickets are on sale now at roguecon23.com. I'm Hank. You might remember me from a show called King of the Hill. Check out Ma, a King of the Hill rewatch podcast. These boys ain't right, but they are funny. Find the Ma podcast anywhere you get your podcasts or at roguemedianetwork.com. I tell you what. <laughs> hmm.